So these two fillies, I suppose you call them fillies, they're four year old. Um, you know, just come in for them. They were booked in to, you know, be trained. And then with everything that's gone on, COVID and, you know, a couple of operations of it, so you had to be put back, but the fellas hung on, so we'll do them. Um, so you've got on the, the big grey, it's purebred Irish draft. A real nice horse, unusual, not unusual horses, they're just hard to find. You know, it's got everything you could want, so you could certainly drive it. It's going to be broken for riding as well while it's here. Um, but a nice big upstanding horse. Not that colour means anything, but a lot of people like to see they've got the four white feet and uh, obviously they'll have a silver mane and tail. You know, next year it's on the way now. She's come into season with us. The man also sent down a colt to be broke as well. More for handling than anything else. Um, brown manners etc so, so when she come into season she's been an absolute nightmare because she comes in and she stayed in she was in four weeks stayed in season for four weeks we give her every opportunity um, but I phoned a man up and said look We'll have to, you know, do something about this because you couldn't train her. Well, we did, we still drove her, you know, up alongside Cloud and she would be, you know, put a clip of film up and show you, she would come into season straight away as soon as Cloud was around. Well, he should be held in, but, you know, whatever. But come into season. Now, I don't like giving them any remedies for that particularly. There are plenty on the market that you can use, you know, go through your vet, always get the advice. Um, you just add it to their food, and, uh, you know, it sorts them out. But I've never been one for that, really. Um, you know, it's nice if you can just do things naturally, you know, you know when their body, when she comes out of season, naturally is better, obviously. So, but what I've noticed, she, her mood swings are dramatic, seriously dramatic. So now she's gone from being quite uh, vicious, I would say, would be the bit not a bit vicious is a bit strong. She would be nippy, kicky. You know, she would be. A, just, uh, hang on here a minute. Come on, walk on. Um, she would be niggly, she would be upset, she'd be uptight. She would be all of them things, but not, she did not got any badness in her. A lot of people would take it for being spiteful, but she's not really like that. So now she's been on these powders for, um, I think it's five days she's now and gradually she's getting better but even now she'll bite this horse you know, she'll bite the other one the chestnut horse she's a very nice you know very nice um, nice little filly lovely you know pleasant good worker I mean a rider more than a driver but they want to drive them so you know that's a and they, do, they make a good little pair. But she makes driving hard work the grey. So we're driving these two, the chestnuts very well behaved, and then the, the grey's not working, it'll come right, right out of draft right now. You know, then it'll come up in the collar, and then it'll want to bite the other horse, etc. So what we've got is what we call a, a line on the outside of the horse the grey just to stop it getting round and biting this horse because it would bite it and would bite it hard you know it would mean it but I think once we get her completely 
out of her season. She's not showing today, up until yesterday she was still showing a bit. Yeah, and if you look there, I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but I will show you it. We've got a secured her towel. Yeah. Now the reason for that, to secure her towel, you wouldn't know what you're doing, you know, when you do that. Um, it's just because she swished the towel around and and it's more in temper and especially when she's showing she'll put the towel right over her back and she'll swish it and she does so just to keep it down so she can still swing it freely as you can see and it's no great but it just stops her and the other thing is obviously she's throwing her towel over the rain then you've got no, no steering and if she clamps it down it would be very hard to get it out and, uh, you know on the public eye but it's a dangerous thing but I should have um, perhaps took a little bit more film of, of yesterday you should see her in she's and she'll be showing as she moved her tail you could see her showing and she choked the cloud but this is the first time up with a, another mare by the side of her but we was going to put her up to the side of another mare that we've got um, two weeks ago on it, it'd be about two weeks ago, and she was showed to the mare, I mean drastically showed to the mare, you know, she would be very wet, um, discharge on her all the time, crouching down behind, you know, and you can't, you can't get cross or be shouting and, and screeching and, you know, like I see some people do because she don't want to fall like that. You know, it's just nature. And you've got to give that a bit of time. So what we try and do is, like, do the towel for one thing. Then we've got a line on the outside coming from, like, just off our head collar. We don't put them on the bit. Just off the head collar, coming up the side, back to the pad just to stop her bringing her head right round. I mean, obviously you've got to know how to put that on, otherwise she wouldn't have any steering, would you? You want her to come round and she couldn't come round because she's restricted. So, those those things. But you see there, look, all the time. Now, I don't want this, this chestnut mare upset because she don't deserve that. Rewashed her all this morning, this, this chestnut horse, was all washed out and done nice and clean because she'd rolled overnight in her stable and got covered in muck. So as soon as we come out, we had a cup of tea, she'd done it again. <laughs> so she's quite clean underneath, but she's stained up all up the quarters there. Come on, walk on. So you just got to go nice and steady. So what I'm trying to say is it makes it difficult to drive. Not difficult, but it makes it awkward to drive because I don't want to upset the chestnut horse. But at the same time, it's a very good lesson for the chestnut horse. Yeah? It's being put under pressure. It's got a horse next to it that wants to bite it. You know, wants to push it, wants to do anything other than just walk alongside it. I'm having to keep the horse up because it keeps coming out of draft. You know, as you can see, the trace is very slack. So I've got to come up. I know this is crude with the reins to give it a tap. Um, but I don't want to be carrying a whip but we don't have whips, we have like the, the stick of a whip with a, with a sponge ball on the end, but I don't want that in my hand at the minute. My hands are better used. Someone passed a comment the other day um, that, you know, I'm always moving my hands. Well, with young horses, you, you want to be moving your hands because anyone that sits here like this with a land, you know, drive like that, you know, hanging on their mouth, that's no good. No good for young horses. You've got to give and take and cajole them and kid them along. You know, you don't really pulling on their mouths. And the further we go, I mean, the chestnut horse is perfectly capable of taking this car up the road, you know, this vehicle up the road. But I want the other horse to keep in draft and do a little bit, yeah? Neither of them have got to work at all, really. There's no work for them as such. You know, although it's a big car, it's, it's quite deceiving, this car. It's, it's light. Um, I mean, we got we bought the vehicle and then we um I don't know what call it um we altered it anyway so it was structurally altered so 
so we took all the floor out, all the all the um, buffalo board, you know, plywood, resin bonded plywood floor we took out, and the rubber mat that was on top of it, which reduced the weight dramatically, yeah? Now you see that chest, I always want to get on with the job then. Now I didn't, normally I would be saying, oh, you wait till I tell you, you know, you do what I ask you to do. But she wants to go up, so I'll go up and, and we'll let her get away with that, you know, because she just feels funny, see, she's still not quite right. But I think this next couple of days, she has a, a, a medicine in the evening with her evening feed, or it's the next couple of days she'll be fine. Personally, myself, you know, I've had, when I've owned horses, um, when I used to have a few horses that I owned myself, that I bred from, if I had a, a, a mare like that, I'd let her have a foal. And then you find, once, in my experience, you know, and I don't have a great deal of experience in that side of things, but um, I found that once I'd had one foal, you know, so you're gonna gonna break, start breaking them at three. They were like that, then I'd put them in foal. Yeah. And once they'd had one foal, you bring them back at four, and they'd be lovely. They wouldn't be coming into season as much. You know, they wouldn't stay into season. They'd handle their season a lot more. So I suppose it's a natural thing, isn't it? That um, the mare's desperate to have have a foal. So. She stopped a lot of her, you see earlier on in the film, earlier on today, she was started to bite Nick, coming over, interfering with the other horse. And, and the chestnut's a lovely horse, so you can say, well, you know, you mess your horse up. Well, I won't mess it up because I, you know, I can control and know what I'm doing. It's moving my hands about on the range all the time, applying a little bit more pressure on this one. And this horse has come back now, the chestnut, so obviously you're coupling rain, you're not doing the same because you're not doing anything. Oh, they're loose on that one and they're on the trails. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting. But the other thing is, you've got to keep them moving. So, so they've come to be trained. So you've got to then keep them moving. Every day they've got to have a lesson. And it doesn't matter how small that lesson is, but they've got to do something every day. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you find that, all, especially when they've got something else going on, like this season, yeah? Or they're not settling very well. Um, we have lots of things we do to get all to settle, and we're normally, well, 90% of the time, you know, I would definitely say 90% of the time we're successful. But other times you're not, you know, they fret a little bit. They, they come, maybe they've lived on their own, you know, just been kept in a stable at someone's house, you know, and, and then they come and there's lots of horses in, you know, normally 10 horses in, around about that, certainly eight to 10. And, you know, it's a bit intimidating sometimes. But there's things you can do to, to make them happier, to make them more relaxed and, and comfortable. But the best thing is, like, like, is to have something else to do. So, and you want to do something with them every day. It doesn't really matter how, how small it is, what you do, you'd often find that um, we might just bring them out, give them, a, a, you know, a good wash. So when I say a good wash, you get a good wash every day with an antibiotic in the pressure washer, um, which we can adjust the temperature on. So that's very comfortable for them. But also what we can do then is maybe give them a, a bit more intense where we'll take, um, we'll have their you know, feet up, groom their, around their feet, um, maybe just buff their feet up a little bit where the clinches are going on, that type of thing. A little bit more intense, do their eyes and ears. Um, you know, we always put some around their rectum mares or buildings we always put a little bit of Vaseline when they've been washed you know because then any poo or, 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 or mess that gets round there don't go all crusty does it it keeps it nice and, and clean you know what I mean uh, so the purpose of this little video is to, to, to explain two things it's the first time these two have been together so you can say they live together 
come from the same owners. Uh, so, and they want to drive them like this. So when they want to drive them out, exercise them, they can do so. What we want is the, is the grey to do its fair share of work. Although it's not feeling on top of the world and feels a little bit funny, we've got to ask it keep up. And it's better now at, at putting a bit of weight in the collar than it was um, steady baby than it was before. So if I ask them now, trot baby, come on, trot, trot, trot. You can see them going, sharing a bit of weight now, better than what they were. I'm not saying it's perfect. Going along, sharing a little bit of weight. The other thing is with this now, I've noticed. Um, <laughs> they've cut the uh, hay in this field behind this head here and uh, the other day when we was out with her they just um, just cut it well it's the field, the next one over actually but and she can smell it and I think I she's got a bit of hay fever <laughs> it seems strange wouldn't it come on but she was uh, you know blowing her nose and, and like that so you can see there she's coming so if you get all that's um, it's like that in season, it, it, it doesn't stop. Come on, girl, let me go. Good girl. Come on, baby girl. Yes, you do. You do. Too. So there's no badness in her, and, but you've got to be careful around the back end of them because they can be funny. As I've said in other films, I've had three horses in my lifetime, maybe four that you put the harness on and that was enough to bring them in season on there you know bring them in season every time you put the harness on but if you if you, if you just drove them with a pad and a collar and you know no traces uh, a pad collar and traces i should say but no bridging you know no crew for nothing else at all and have your traces short enough so they didn't get too low around their legs drive along no trouble at all so you put a bridge in on they've been seasoned well that's you know not good is it obviously so always ask always check with your vet and you know they'll recommend or you know prescribe one of these remedies as I say I don't like it I'd sooner put them in foal and, and see how they are the next time but that's not always practical to do obviously so yeah that's, that's basically I love this little chestnut horse. Not like, you know, particularly my cup of tea. It's very light. Well, it's not too light in the leg to do the job. It does it very well. Um, but lovely nature, you know, nice nice nature. It wasn't to start with. It was in the other way, if anything, you know. Um, but I don't know. I think she just she clicked with Reed, I think. Um, you know, and you, how do I know that? Well, as soon as she if she you know, if she heard Reed's voice in the stable, she stopped it and have a look for her, you know, to see where she was. So that was the tie, you know, that was her anchor, that was her strength, that was her solace, whatever you want to say. And if you can find that for her, I think that's a lovely, lovely thing, you know, to be able to do. So yeah, if you get one in season, um, and it won't, you know, the season won't leave it um, because it's stimulated by the harness. I mean, this all obviously is probably stimulated by the colts that's in this gable. But, you know, you put it up alongside the gelding, be heavily in season, show to the gelding all the time. And I mean, seriously show to the gelding. So, you know, it's hard to control or get any sense out of her at all. So, yeah. But she's going along all right now. And that's fine. We can have a cup of coffee in a minute when we get up the road here a bit. There's a nice little place that does a cup of coffee. And we're going for a fair ride today, a fair distance. And they've had a nice walk and a nice trip. So that's it, yeah. There's a smile on my face every time I hear that sound. The rhythm of the hoops as they touch the ground And there's no better place I'd rather be Than with my safe, confident horse And there's no better place 
I'd rather be than with my safe, confident horse that's had.